Hi guys. So today is splash minus nine. We don't have much time left at all. So let me explain what's been going on today. I got to bed at one o'clock last night after uploading the video and doing all the back office stuff that goes along with that. Um, we woke up at seven. I say we, Rosella is constantly awake through the night with, uh, with Emma feeding her. So she's constantly tired, bless her. Um, but I woke up at seven, we went and got ready. Uh, this morning I had to go and do an errand, I had to go to the post office and while I was just about to leave I got a phone call, there were a couple of lorry deliveries uh, one after the other uh, dropping off parcels so I went and dealt with those and you'll see what we got on the lorry deliveries later in this video. Um, then after that we had a bit of a nightmare, Rosella at one point wanted to murder me today I think. Uh, basically we have a washing machine on this boat which sounds really extravagant, but it's not. It's just a little camping washing machine. In fact, I'll show you it now. Here it is, our little washing machine, little twin tub. Uh, we only used it today. So far, so good. We'll give you a better update about that when we know more about it. So what happened? Basically, I wanted to leave the washing machine in the head, the aft head, with the, uh, the drain pipe going into the sink so that it was ready to drain when that was necessary. And I wasn't really bothered about the space around it. Rosella being uh, more kind of fiscal, she wanted to leave the five centimetre gap around it as it said in the instruction manual, so she wanted it in the cabin. So basically it was in the middle of the cabin. And I'd been working outside, I came into the boat, Rosella went to feed Emma, and um, I was in charge of just turning off the pasta, which I did late as well. So we ended up eating super overcooked British style pasta for lunch today. And basically it was in my way, the washing machine, so I moved it. Um, and prior to this, Rosella had already had a little bit of an accident and flooded the cabin of the boat. Flooded, you know, some water spilt on the floor, she dealt with that. And then I moved it and I made a mess of it and I flooded the, the bathroom. Twice actually, I flooded it once. <laughs> then I cleaned that up and then I moved it to a different place and I turned on the hot water tap accident and I flooded the bathroom again. So there was water in all kind of all our storage area for medicines and all different stuff so uh, Rosella was annoyed at me because she, if I'd have left it where it was that wouldn't have happened and I was annoyed at her because if I'd have put it where I wanted it at the beginning that wouldn't have happened either so we were both annoyed at each other and we were both right and both wrong. <laughs> I cleaned outside in the cockpit today because this boat has been under some trees for about four years and it's all green all the teak in the cockpit is green you can't really sit down on it and Rosella has um, and Emma too have been kind of stuck in the boat because they can't go outside because if you go outside you get dirty. So I cleaned that today and then by the time I got started on our sail drive diaphragm work it was already six o'clock in the evening so I didn't have a lot of time available. It is now ten to nine at night. I shall cut to some footage that I took outside the boat uh, so you can see the parcels that arrived today and also what I've been up to with this sail drive. Here are the two parcels that arrived today. So the first is chain, anchor chain. I ordered 100 meters of eight millimeter anchor chain. And I always look, we, we always look uh, for the best deals in everything all the time. So I spent quite a few hours online. I looked at all the different suppliers I could find in the UK, looking on eBay, different websites, uh, chandleries. Uh, industrial places, you know, fishing places, all kinds of different suppliers, not just sailing, uh, but all kinds to, uh, to try and get rid of any inflated prices. But um, it actually turned out that it was cheaper to buy 100 metres of chain in Italy and get it shipped all the way across Europe than buy it here in the UK, which is incredible because usually it's the other way around. However, on this occasion, that isn't the case. So I'm very happy with this because um, it's hot dip galvanized and just having a look at it, it does look as though it's got a nice amount of zinc. Um, sometimes you can get chain that's supposed to be hot dip galvanized and it doesn't look very zinky, but on this occasion it does look like this is quite a good quality um, chain. So I believe there's 100 meters here 
Uh, I'm shortly going to walk this out across the ground and just double check that there is 100 meters here because once it's in the anchor locker um, I'm not going to be counting it out again so I need to do this now. Here's the second package that arrived. It's a pallet and it's got four AGM batteries on it. These are gonna be our house batteries. And um, again, I looked around everywhere to find the best deal. Uh, it's not just the lowest price, of course, because it is a, uh, a compromise between quality and price. And I did my research. Um, some of the batteries that I was looking at were extremely cheap but then if you look at the technical specifications they had a cycle life uh, to 50 percent depth of discharge they had a cycle life of 70 cycles um, so they are really not going to last very long at all that's the bottom end of the scale the top end of the scale you've got lithium batteries uh, they are incredible technology and they are wonderful they're very lightweight you can get 6,000 cycles from each battery so they will last a very long time but they do have quite a hefty price tag um, a very hefty price tag you're talking about thousands of pounds per battery uh, so that isn't an option for us so we have gone for AGM batteries uh, absorbed glass mat these will last a long time these have got a cycle life of 600 cycles uh, they're not too heavy each battery weighs 20 kilos it's 100 amp hours per battery and uh, the price was pretty good so the prices for these um, the batteries i've got this all written on my hand by the way the batteries were 510 pounds now that is expensive that's a lot of money um, however, when you consider the way that we cruise, we always stay at anchor and batteries mean freedom. Batteries and solar panels, you can stay for an unlimited amount of time on the hook. So it's a wise investment because if you're paying 50 euros a night for a marina, uh, you know, you'll soon get this money back. So that's the batteries. The chain was £344 for 100 metres. That is... Oh, sorry, going back to the batteries for our US cousins. Uh, that's $730 for the four batteries. Um, coming back to the chain. The chain was £344, which is $490 US dollars. That's including shipping. And the, the shipping, this weighs 140 kilos. And the shipping was uh, £8.50 or $12 uh, to take it across Europe. So quite a good deal. Uh, there we are. So, in order to remove the sail drive, not only do I need to disconnect it from the engine, um, I also need to take off the propeller. I'm also going to remove the bearing housing. That's not strictly speaking necessary, but on this boat there's not much room up inside, so I'm going to have to do that to give me the, uh, the space required to get it out through the hole. Uh, so, removing the prop, very easy. You just need to remove a stainless steel bolt, then the prop cone unscrews and then you simply pull the propeller off its shaft however last time i was here a couple of months ago uh, basically it was a nightmare to get the stainless steel bolt out it was a nightmare to get the prop cone off and it's an incredibly difficult nightmare to get the prop off and the reason for that is this anode is not actually bolted to the sail drive it was it was floating around completely literally loose so um, that was providing no cathodic protection whatsoever to the sail drive fortunately the propeller did that job so our propeller became an anode which is why it's got all holes in it and it's completely destroyed uh, fortunately that happened because uh, by doing that the, uh, the prop became the anode and the sail drive became the cathode. So the prop was protecting the sail drive and the sail drive doesn't have any corrosion, thank goodness, because if it did, that would be a very expensive job. So uh, because these have been undergoing uh, a process of galvanic corrosion, you've got kind of white deposits between the 
prop shaft and the prop hub and it won't come off. So I have been here before, I've had a massive puller on it and once I put enough pressure on it for it to break, it didn't break where I wanted it to. The prop itself broke. I managed to break the inner part of the propeller from the outer part of the propeller. So it's going to be a lot of fun and games to get this off. I'm going to borrow a massive puller tomorrow and uh, from the boatyard when they open again in the morning and we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. If anybody has I've got a few ideas myself, you know, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to get there. But if anybody else has experienced this, if you've got a trick, let me know. I've tried boiling water, WD-40, blowtorch, whacking it with a hammer. I've tried all the usual tricks, um, but so far no joy. So wish me luck with that. And uh, before I go, just let me give this another little spray of WD-40, just in case. There we are then, that's been our day. It is now nine o'clock at night. We have to eat, wash up, sort Emma out. I need to have a shower. Um, and then I need to edit this video, upload it, do all the back office stuff. So it's gonna be at least midnight, maybe one o'clock again, before we get some sleep. So I have to go now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Rosella will be here tomorrow. She's feeding Emma at the moment. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. So cheers for watching. Bye, ciao.